Age 16, um, I got my first ever job. It was in Sainsbury's. Um, I got fired from Sainsbury's. Uh, I was eating a donut on the shop floor. After Sainsbury's, um, you see, I moved up in the world here. I got my Primark badge. Still kept it. I got a job in Primark. Um, stuck in women's shoes in Lakeside, in Essex. After that, I got a job in Curry's, um, then PC World, then the old arena where I met um, Miss Begum. So Miss Begum, your teacher, actually used to be my boss in the old arena, but I'll come back to that later on. I then got a job um, for a men's suit hire company. I've been an extra in TV programs like EastEnders, Casualty, The Bill, Law and Order. Um, so I've worked practically everywhere ever since I was 16. Um, I wasn't academically smart. I was the biggest underachiever in my year group at year 11, which coming from a Pakistani household, that didn't go down too well. Yeah. So in this list, there was people from Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, Google, NASA College, and me from Ilford. Um, and I was like, what? And um, I was like, you know one thing you can never cheat in life, yeah? Is your passion. If you are passionate about something, nobody can take that away from you. I can't take that away from you. No, your teachers can't, your family can't. If you are passionate about something, you keep that. That's special. So I'm really passionate about mental health. Um, and I'm in Russia, um, and it's an incredible thing. When I got told I won, the first thing I said was, hello, my name is Hussein, and I'm not a terrorist. The first thing I want to tell the world is, what you see is exactly what you get. Me, I shop at Top Man, I like Nando's, Netflix and Chill, that's it. I'm a normal person just like everyone else. Unfortunately, a small minority of people that claim to be the same as me put out a message that a lot of people believe. So, that was the first thing I said. The second thing I said was, if you're suffering through mental health, it's absolutely fine. Welcome to the club, there's seven billion of us. Now, mental health affects one in four people. We all know three people. So if it doesn't affect you personally, it will affect somebody you know. And that, for me, is a problem. I'm not going you. They're here to do a job. And their job is to look after you as well as educate you. And your job is to also look after them because they're human too. And you'll realise, and I promise you, I promise you, you will realise the moment it's exams day, you come here to collect your results and, you'll, and you wave them by and you go on into life, that there's not many people that will look out for you anymore. And that's the harsh reality of it. Um, I learned a saying and it was, Make lemonade when life throws lemon at when life throws lemons at you. It is lemons, make lemonade. You must feel like Abraham. They give me better hope for you know. It's bullying. Alright, well. So you know what I'm saying. Are you sure it was that? Alright, well you get you get the Uh, give that picture a round of applause, please. Come on. <laughs> Look at that. She's got her foot. <laughs> you know, I'll let you go. Imagine that thing is about swagger. You have to be matching. <laughs> Can you change the picture, please? <laughs> okay, that's all I like it. Um, so I guess the reason why I'm saying posted that picture is basically just to show you the transition of where I've come from to where I am now. That picture doesn't necessarily tell you a lot about my life back then, but so I'm Jam. I'm 23. Uh, people call me jam, jam on toast, jam sandwich. It's because I have a twin sister called Jamila. My parents didn't think it through calling someone Jamila and Jamala. Teachers in the room, you would have had a nightmare with us because we were exactly the same. Both very misbehaved. So I remember getting excluded for something that she done, and she got excluded for something that I done. And medical records being like. Music and you
That's what I remain. Yes, Well, you got a, you have a black future ahead of you, man. It's true, let's accept it. It gets. Are you doing that banana? <laughs> no, you're not sharing any theory. No, I'm alright. <laughs> um, sometimes in life, things get really difficult. We just want to leave you with one thing here. Yeah? Your generation, this class of people, you are powerful, you are capable, and you are the future. It's in your hands. It's, we, we pass that power now over to you. I'm getting old. Your teachers are getting old. Your families are getting old. It's your generation that's going to save the world. So if you think you want to go out there and do it, you can. And never forget that. Okay. We have a special request. Can you go on the piano, please? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a poem for you lot. Um, school was the best time of my life. I loved school. When I left school, I was really upset. Um, something slow though, yeah? Something slow. Um, I wrote a poem the other day called Playground that I'm going to leave you all with. And um, I hope you enjoy it and it reminds you of your 
high school and primary school life. We've never practiced this, by the way, I'm just to let you know. You like it already? <laughs> All right. I need to fall in love with the world again. I need to see things the way I used to see them when I was 10. Give me nine boxes of chalk, let me play hopscotch. A blanket and a mattress and I'll build a castle, I'll sit there on night watch. Put a tooth under my pillow, I'm praying the fairy flies through my window. I'm singing B-I-N-G-O, bingo was his name oh. I need a blue paper towel to wipe away all my worries. Mr Patel's on Fridays to get sweets from my little tummy. I owned a packed lunchbox, a book bag, my name was on a tray. Stories by the road doll. The BFG never led us astray. I'm holding my breath before I make my birthday wish. My year one class never found Nemo, but we found the rainbow fish. Running through the playground, Bulldog was mental. We had the best conversations around the classroom bin while sharpening our HP pencils. I'd run to the back of the coach on the school trip. It felt like Dumbledore put the sorting hat on my head and was like, Hussein, you're chosen for this. McDonald's drive-thru, talking to a robotic person who gives you whatever you want each time it comes in a small little box with a small little person. I remember the day a nosebleed would be my worst possible disaster. I was naughty in school and parents evening had me scared of going home after. And I really wonder if it's still there. The back of my GCSE's desk when I wrote Hussein was here. WWE's dumb trainers at home didn't stop us from wrestling. Christian had a BMX, we broke his dump pen, that's how fast we were pedaling. And the animals went in two by two, hurrah, hurrah. I'm still convinced their staff room is a secret hidden theme park. Toys are a million all under one roof. But Toys of Us is too expensive to go and that's just the truth. We discovered end up the learn how to rap. I know for a fact, each one of you know that one student that doesn't really care will jump over the playground wall to get your footballs back. I'm dancing with my trainers, they light up. No one can ever stop me. I was raised on an era of football stickers, Beyblades and yellow Tamagotchis. When Aaron broke his arm, we repeated his sling. You knew it was going to be a really good party when you walked into the school hall and saw a packet of party links. Do you want to know something I can do? I never figured out fractions, but give me a scientific calculator, I'll turn it upside down, I'll type a few numbers, excuse me miss, I know how to write boobs. <laughs> After school walks, we in the park for a stroll. I speak on behalf of every single one of you when I told my PE teacher, none of us like wearing plimsolls. I got a key for the cupboard, it was always locked. I felt like a boss. We never had overhead projectors. We had a TV that was stuck on wheels. In the dark, in the dark, we turned the lights off. We'd watch Bernard's watch. We run from dinner ladies. Nobody ever eats their peas. For snacks time, it was a fruit yogurt or a string full of cheese. The alphabet on the wall used to guide us through life. Last day of term, cinema, brotherhood. Boy, we're still on such a hype. And our paper planes would glide effortlessly through our classroom stratosphere. And if it hit the back of someone's head, you face the wall. And your best mate looks at you and goes, yeah. And that brings us to sports day. We're all 100 meter sprinters. Windows XP users, HP inject printers. We've all had one hour detentions for fake parent signatures. Non-uniform day, tracksuit wearers, bus top riders, cake and custard eaters. We are and always will be the wet play war survivors. I don't know if you don't remember, Sabrina was a teenage witch. Hell got always bullied Arnold. Kel loved her in soda, but nobody ever went to Keshi's castle. And that's why sometimes in life I feel like my luck's up. I swear to God, I would do anything in the world for one more game of heads down, thumbs up. So let me mind me singing assemblies. I never knew the songs. Let me lean back on my chair. Yeah, Hussein only learns when he's wrong. Let me bring Sherbet straws to the disco. Let me feel like a don. Let me relive all the memories of the playground, because that's where I belong. The playground. That's where we would all handle our business. The land of the young, wild, free, freaky and ambitious. We're trying to figure out, oh, which one of us is going to be the richest? But some of us were behind the bike sheds. Our shirts were tucked out, face was covered in kisses. I said I need to fall in love with the world again. I wish I could see things the way I used to see them when I was 10. So give me nine boxes of chalk, let me play hopscotch. A blanket and a mattress, I build a castle, I sit there and I watch. My mind singing assemblies, I don't care if you don't know the songs. Lean back on your chair if you only know when you're wrong. 
Bring sherbet straws to the disco if that makes you feel like a don. Never in your life forget the memories of the playground, Shooters Hill. Because when you leave school, you'll realise that's where we all really belong. Thank you. Should I fear that the next statistic is loud and clear and could be living right here? No, stop, listen. The good times are distant now and the laughter's not going to drown it out. You might not know it's there, but as time goes on, I see that your memories were. I noticed that you've forgotten how to be yourself, but I know the real you is hiding someplace else. I want you to remember me, I want you to recognise me. I want you to know my face, but Alzheimer's is real, and that is sadly the case. Oh, did I say that A word? God forbid that society enables me politically into incorrect. I can't hold my thumb, so apparently I'm a victim. Could depression due to lack of progression or lack of affection cause bitterness inside of suicidal professions? You see, in life there are lessons, but losing all your possession could cause any human being to suffer from mental digression. I plead on behalf of my brothers and sisters who've worked so hard and walked so far in this path of life, only to end up with blisters. Misters leaving their initial counterparts and counting, sorry, counting hearts. They're broken like each heart was a fixture. I feel your pain. But that precious skin pierced by the blade of a knife, only because you're lonely and you've just lost your wife, is a small price to pay in your eyes. But I beg that, please don't use your zest for life. Your open wounds can never reduce the eternal scars. Just pray for her, and remember when you look up to the stars, you and her were in the same car, but ended your life too when you're taking things too far. Or what about the property stricken homes? The babe just locked the door down and they've got nowhere else to go. They know that. They know that it's an injustice, they packed the rest of their clothes, the government neglected them and their postcode. She drags a suitcase with all she's gained in her life, and her five or six kids trip sweetly behind. She begs one more time, please sir, please be kind. But he slams the door, and her bitter reality unwinds. Depression leads to intense sadness, drug abuse, prostitution, or plain madness. Fasten your seatbelts, it's a bumpy ride. We label them all as crazy, they struggle to stay alive. Some of us feel alone, but some of us really are. Depression's opened the wound. Depression opens the wounds of memories from the past. Constantly reliving the moments you'd rather forget. The knife or the bullet, which kills quicker, what happens next? Certain situations in life cause you to question your faith. If God really existed, why am I always in pain? Even when it looks sunny, I'm stuck underneath the rain. I'm searching for quick solutions to numb me from all this pain. I have a question. Could depression due to lack of progression or lack of affection cause bitterness inside or suicidal confessions? Will humanity ever learn its lesson? somebody else's feelings you need to stop because not only will you affect somebody during college you'll affect them for the rest of their life as well depending on how serious the situation is and the most important thing i just want you to take away from this is to be there for each other and be there for yourself so thank you very much you've been fantastic and better with Jamala and uh, we've never said this before but the love in this school has been incredible so thank you very much for having me.